David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have for you a pen which is from a new brand for me. Uh, now, I've been aware of this brand for many years, but this is the first pen that I've purchased for them. And that brand is Santini. And the model is the Giant 8. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Santini Giant 8, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, this is a pen that I purchased and is part of my personal collection. Uh, Santini is based out of the Turin region in northern Italy. I believe they're located in a small town between Turin and Milan. Uh, the gentleman behind the brand is Giovanni Santini. Uh, there have been a couple of nice articles about Santini and Pen World. This one here was in the most recent issue. There's Giovanni, along with his wife and daughter. Uh, both his wife and daughter accompanied Giovanni to the DC show this year. I believe they said it was uh, his wife and daughter's first trip to the U.S. Uh, they had spent a few days in New York City before heading down to DC and really enjoyed their time there. You know, New York City is a fun place to visit. Giovanni began producing pens back in 1998 when he purchased the dormant brand Encora. Uh, he subsequently sold off that brand and began his own appropriately named Santini. Uh, one of the unique things about Santini is that they are one of the few companies producing their own nibs. Uh, this somewhat out of focus picture was from a couple of years ago at the DC show. It shows the different stages of the nib making process from a small piece of gold all the way up to the finished product. Now, I've met Giovanni at a couple of previous DC shows, but I didn't pick up one of his pens until this most recent show. You know, I'll have people at shows ask me if I have anything in mind to purchase. I typically say that what I'm looking to purchase is something that I'm not even aware of, something that I'll just come across that instantly captures my attention. Uh, while I was familiar with the Santini brand, uh, this was the first time I was seeing this particular model. And as soon as I saw it at Giovanni's table, I knew that I had to have it. And it was the only pen that I purchased at the show this year. Uh, now, I was given the, the pen in this felt pouch. Uh, they either didn't bring boxes or ran out of boxes, I'm not sure which, uh, but I am supposed to be receiving a box shipped here to me in the near future. Uh, August is a uh, strange month in Italy where lots of things shut down and everyone goes on vacation. Um, I've worked with a number of companies based out of Italy and sometimes it's tough getting things done in August. Uh, it's best to just contact them in September when everyone has returned. So eventually I have, will have a box, but for now, that's not really important. What's important is what is inside this pouch, and that would be the Santini Giant 8. Uh, this specific model is called the Intenso, which translates from Italian as intense. Um, this pen is appropriately named. It is indeed very much a giant. Uh, it is a large pen. Uh, it's made from resin, and the trim is a rhodium plated bronze. Uh, the resin used in this pen is very interesting. The resin for this particular model is a deep blue. There are portions which are very dark, with very subtle swirling. And then there's other portions which look like this. Now, these portions remind me of almost like a crater-filled surface of the moon, with a, a dusty creaminess. Uh, it looks interesting and really brings this material to life. Uh, something I appreciate about the construction of this pen, uh, the cap threads have three different entry points, and with one of those entry points, the, let's say, visually interesting uh, part of the material actually lines up. Uh, at least they do here on the pen in my possession. Okay, let's take a look at the top of the cap. There is a resin insert. Uh, it's rather dark here, but it's the same resin that's found on the remainder of the pen. That insert comes to a rounded point. Uh, then we have the clip. It is a bit on the wide side, but it is not overly thick. Um, it is a bit on the stiff side, but the wheel helps accommodate materials both thick and thin. Uh, the cap angles up at an even rate of incline until the end where it straightens out about half an inch before the triple bands. There are two thin bands surrounding a larger one with a Greek key design. 
Um, also on the band, it is stamped with the company name and Italia. Uh, these pens are 100% manufactured in Italy. There is a rounded, medium-sized step down to the barrel, which tapers down slightly until you get to the end, where you have a couple of things. There is a band indicating the beginning of the piston knob, and there is a second grooved band. I like the inclusion of this second band. I feel it looks really nice and also serves a purpose of increasing your grip on the piston knob when inking up this pen. Uh, the cap twists off with one and a quarter rotations, and underneath we have a real visual highlight for this pen, which is the 18 karat gold rhodium plated number no. 8 nib. Um, I believe there's also a gold plated version of this nib available as well. Uh, as I mentioned previously, Santini makes their nibs in house. Now, this nib is stamped, not engraved. Uh, from a distance, the nib looks great, but when you examine it closely, I will say that the depth of the stamping is a bit inconsistent. Um, some of the design seems well struck, like the 750, uh, but then there are areas of the S logo which seem a bit shallow and spotty. Um, on either side of the S logo, it has two digits, the year 1998, so it's like 19 and then 98, which is the year the company was founded, and those are both barely legible. Um, and then at the bottom, I'm not quite sure what that is supposed to say. Uh, there is the letters I, T, A, L, and L. I thought it might say Italy, but the last letter doesn't look to be a, a misstruck Y. And then I thought it might say Italia, and the A was just not visible. Uh, but I actually think that's two L's. They look identical and are different than the I at the top. So I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to say. Uh, in regard to performance, this nib writes very well, but I will say that I have experienced it drying out at times. Um, not while writing, but more in between writing sessions, or if I leave the cap off for too long. Um, I'll discuss more about that during the writing sample. And here's a look at the low profile ebonite feed. Um, I do like the looks of this feed. The section begins with a thin band, and then there's a wider one duplicating the Greek key design on the cap band. The section itself is virtually straight. It only rises a tenth of a millimeter from beginning to end, where it transitions into the cap threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. With a name like Giant, you would hope it would be. Um, I do enjoy larger pens, and I find this one to be very comfortable in the hand. Um, the cap does post. It does post securely. It posts deeper than I thought it would. Um, and even though this is a very large pen, I don't feel that posting the pen makes it unwieldy or backweights the pen or throws off the balance. It's very usable when posted. Um, I mentioned the piston knob earlier. This is a piston filler. One of the things I like about this piston is that when you are twisting the knob, it does not separate from the barrel slightly as most pistons do. It stays in place. It has a ratcheting safety system in place to prevent you from over tightening the knob. There you can hear the ratcheting system there. Plus, I've always liked that ratcheting sound. The Santini Giant 8 is available from a couple of different European retailers from what I could find, but I would recommend first checking out the official Santini site. There, these pens retail for about $6.75, depending on the uh, euro to dollar exchange rate. And I feel that that's an appropriate price range for what you receive with this pen. Um, I purchased this pen and I had no issues with the price. Uh, the resin is beautiful. It has very solid construction. Uh, is it perfect? No. Um, it, is it tantalizingly close to perfect? Yes. Um, if the nib stamping were a bit cleaner and I didn't experience some of the occasional hard starts, uh, this is a pen that could easily be in my top 10 across my entire collection. It, it has the potential to be that good. The potential is there. And I can imagine that, uh, you know, this might not be the last Santini which makes its way into my collection. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. So here we have some size comparisons for the Santini Giant 8. I just wanted to give you another look at this material and how I said that it kind of comes to life, especially with some of that pearlescence here at the top. 
And I just really like the looks of there. And you can see that that's present in a couple of different areas. Um, and it just looks really nice. In regard to some size comparisons with some other very large pens, here it is with a Namiki Emperor. Let's put them all at the end here. Um, this is a Danny Trio Genkai. Let me just put that there so that we can actually see it there. Uh, and then here it is with a Sailor King of Pen in Ebonite. In regard to some other large pens, here it is with a uh, Pilot Custom Arushi. Uh, here it is with an Edison Collier Grande. Uh, super large pens aren't made for sitting next to each other in these little uh, troughs here. Uh, and then finally, this is a uh, Leonardo Momento Zero Grande, which is a large pen in its own right, but you can see that it uh, looks kind of small compared to these other ones. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, I wanted to show some uh, nib comparisons. So uh, in with some other pens with some larger nibs, this is what it looks like. And we'll line it up with the nib so you can see how that compares. That's a Pelican M1000. Uh, here is that Collier Grande with a number eight nib. Uh, here is that Namiki Emperor and the Mont Blanc 149. So you can see how all of those compare. Um, it's almost as big as the Namiki, uh, but fairly similar in size to the number eight uh, Magna Carta nib that can be found on the Edison Collier Grande. Here we go with the writing sample for the Santini. And this is the giant Eight. This is a medium 18 karat gold nib and the ink is one that I felt matched really well with this pen which was from Robert Oster and is called Admiral Blue. This is what the ink looks like. Um, it's a nice shading blue. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to a Roshizuku Konpeki. And then a, another color that looks very similar is the Fountain Pen Revolution Royal Flush Blue. Oh, and I messed up my writing just a little bit. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, this is what the Robert Oster bottles look like. Uh, and I believe that this is a, a retailer exclusive ink that is available only through Galen Leather. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, this is a very nice nib to write with. Now, I mentioned before that I did have some hard start issues. Um, now, that was mainly uh, when you haven't used the pen for a while. It would just dry out a little bit on the end uh, or if you uh, left it uncapped for a little bit. Um, but once it's writing, I find that it keeps up just fine. You can see here that you can push it a little bit to get a little bit of line variation out of here. I say the ink flow on this medium nib is de uh, decent. And in regard to reverse writing, I'd say it is a little bit on the scratchy side. In regard to some fast writing, The feed keeps up well. I wanted to give you another close-up look at that nib stamping as well. Uh, like I said, there's just a little bit of imperfection there that I thought uh, could have been improved upon to uh, improve the overall experience with this pen because uh, the nib is very nice when you're writing with it. I just wish the stamping looked a little bit better on that. But there we have the Santini Giant 8. Um, it's something that I very much enjoy. And uh, as I mentioned, I, uh, I took a long time to get around to this brand, but I can imagine that down the line, this might not be the only Santini that I own. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.